What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to change the rear brake pads in a 5th generation Toyota 4Runner. Alright, for this job you're going to need the brake pads themselves. I'll leave a link for these down below. A brake caliper tool, a torque wrench, ratchet, 21 17mm sockets, wide jaw pliers, brake clean, hammer, and a screwdriver depending on the hardware. Alright, the first thing you're going to want to do before you jack up the vehicle is to crack the lug nuts loose. After cracking the lug nuts loose, you're then going to jack up the vehicle and put it on jack stands. Then on the side you're working on, remove the wheel completely. Now is the perfect time to check out the rotor. In my case, mine's in pretty good shape. There's one little line here, but it's very, very faint. So I'm not going to replace this rotor. Next, on the back side of the caliper, using a 17mm socket, remove the two side pin bolts. Now you can rotate the caliper itself up and out of the way. And be careful not to kink the brake line. Now you should be able to remove the brake pads. And in my case, they're a little bit stubborn, so I had to use a screwdriver. But if you use a screwdriver, just be careful not to gouge up your rotor. Next, use your old brake pad and the piston caliper tool and push the piston back into the housing. I'll leave a link for this caliper piston tool in the description below. And if you don't have one of these, you can also use a C-clamp. Once the piston is pretty much flush with the housing, you know it's pushed another way. Then I like to give the caliper a good cleaning with some brake clean. Next, open up the hardware packet that came with the brake pads. And the best way to swap this out is to match up the old hardware with the new. Pull it out, give it a good cleaning in the area, and then put the new hardware in. And this hardware was a little bit difficult to get in, so I had to use a screwdriver to kind of push it down in. But don't use too much force, you don't want to kink this hardware at all. Once you get that one seated down correctly, you then want to move on to the next one. And then there are two more on the back side. Just make sure each one is totally seated down before you move on. I also used a pair of pliers to seat on the hardware. Just be careful once again not to kink it at all. Then do the same thing on the back side hardware. Remove it, clean the area, then install the new hardware. Once you've installed the hardware, you then want to put a little bit of brake caliper lube on each one of these hardware pieces. Just make sure not to get it on the rotor itself. Then install the little wear indicator. That's this little piece here. This goes on the end, and once the brake pads get low, it'll start making noise. Here's what it looks like. Then install the brake pads by putting the bottom in first, and then pushing in on the top. And same thing on the back side. And 
once you have the brake pads in place, then put a little bit of the brake caliper lube on the back side of the brake pads as well. And then now you can rotate the caliper back into position. Next, you want to take your slide pins, give them a good cleaning, put some brake caliper lube on them as well. Then reinsert the upper slide pin and hand tighten it for now. Then reinsert the lower slide pin and hand tighten it. Then tighten these down to a final torque of 65 foot-pounds. Then reinstall the wheel and tighten down the lug nuts to a final torque of 83 foot-pounds. Then obviously repeat this entire process on the other side of the vehicle. Then before you drive the vehicle, you want to start it up, build up some brake pressure before shifting into gear. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Also check out all the links in the description below and check out all my other 400 maintenance videos. We'll see you in the next one.